shod your feet with preparation to do the work of an evangelist. Yes, Lord, I will obey. Only, only if you give me the strength to obey. And I believe he has because he has given me his Holy Spirit. That is the conversation that God and I had when I was going through a horrible, a terrible sickness. And this is the psalm that he gave me that carried me through that trial that I was enduring. Psalm 121. We're going to read the entire chapter. And it reads, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall keep you from all evil. He shall keep your soul, that is, your very life. The Lord shall keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. May the good Lord have a blessing to those who read, hear, trust, believe, and thereby obey his precious, treasured word by faith. Let us pray. Father God, I need you. I'm needy. Help me. I'm helpless. Thank you. I'm thankful. In Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, what a beautiful psalm we just, just heard, just read, and hopefully, hopefully believe. Some of you may not may not be aware of this, but this is known as a song, as in singing, song of degrees. Degrees, I like to think of it being classified as such too, to perpetuate this illustration of the Christian's everyday walk or lifestyle in worshiping God in degrees. Degrees as in this, this continuous, you know, moving, pressing through life's struggles and difficulties, irrespective of all the obstacles that we face, we are yet still advancing forward, forward and upward, because there's a there's an incline there. I believe that that must be understood when Paul says, forgetting those things which are behind, behind all of the, you know, the guilt, shame, failed relationships, regrets, humiliations, past sins and hurts that tries to hinder our forward progress, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. And we know that that's moving forward and upward because our hands should be raised and praised in God's goodness, raised and praised in God's presence with the always expectation of increase, increase in worship, of God, a style of life, increase in adoration, solemn reverence, reverential awe of God, a steady lifelong increase of the, the fear of God. Yes, you heard me correctly. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and fools despise wisdom and instruction. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge of the Holy One that is understanding. It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and them who obeys his commandments have a good understanding. It also says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and to depart from evil. That is understanding. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to your navel and marrow to your bones. The fear of the Lord. There should be an increase in the fear of God. True trust and faith in God. In him continuously like in degrees. Degrees by definition meaning levels, steps, stages in a process like human growth and maturity. 
in which in our case, it is eternal Christ-like spiritual growth and maturity increasing. Your inner man should be growing, increasing as in as in advancement, making some progress, meaning the new you should not look like the old you dressed up with nothing new about you other than that, other than you holding this new Christian label, this sign that truly doesn't define you. First Peter 2, 2 says this, it says, as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby, that is increase in stature, mature. It is sincere milk that we should move from to, if I would say, sincere meat. <laughs> I remember my mama was talking about somebody and, and, and their baby, and she was dead serious. But in a jokative manner, she said something to this effect. She had me rolling. She said, her legs behind, keep on sticking that bottle in that baby's mouth. He keep on throwing it to the side because that baby doesn't want that done milk. <laughs> he has a mouth full of teeth. He doesn't want that milk. He wants some meat. He wants something to eat. It's just the same with us. When we eat and taste and see that the Lord is good, the reality of that should be seen in our life. Let me say it like this. A prayerless person should be put back on the bottle. As Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 2, that I fed you with milk, not meat, for you were not yet able to receive it. Even now, you are still not ready. Oh, no, let let that not be said about us in our Christian faith, that we are all, let it be known that we are all moving in some degree, always continuously advancing, graduating achievement, endless, it should be endless spiritual success because of the faithfulness of the author, you know, the pioneer, the finisher, the consummator of our faith, even Jesus Christ. And, and we can only say that, we can only say that because he, he propitiated. That's a huge, um, massive theological term. He propitiated, that is, he, he placated, he pacified, satisfied the, the wrath of God, turned the wrath of God off of us and on to himself. When he died in our place and the wrath of God crushed him on the cross for all of our sins. It's like we went from F, failure, death, to A, a sin, life eternal. It's like everyone graduates. Fully justified, you know, summa cum laude, the, the highest degree decorated, blameless with the honors, given with the same degree gifted in Jesus. If you don't mind me, me using such language and describing us by the blood of Jesus, describing us undeservingly growing up in God's grace. 1 Peter 1, 18 through 19 says this, you know that from your empty way of life inherited from your ancestors, you were ransomed, not by perishable things like silver or gold, but by precious blood like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb, namely Christ. We are saved by the grace of God. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says this, God saved you by his grace when you believed and you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Yes, it is in Jesus Christ. We are second Peter 3, 18 growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord, which is the word of God, Ephesians 4, 12, the word of God that builds up the body of Christ. All of us are all of us as a unified body of believers growing increasingly together, together in the most practical, the, together in the most realistic, tangible, visible togetherness degree in Christ, which is in that which held him on the cross because we know it wasn't the nails. No, it was that while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. Love. It, it, it was that for while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. It was in that you did not choose me, but I chose you love. It was that I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Love. So how can the Holy Scriptures not say that you will know my people for the love that they have one for another? So the body of Christ is a body of love. And the building up of this body, Ephesians 4.13, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature, measuring up. 
that's increasing, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. What is the standard? Everything that you see in this book. Believe it and obey it. Yes. Yes, we should be able to, to identify with this, the classification of this Psalm 121's framework all in itself before we delve into its contents. Since we live a life that is sung like a song of degrees. As with all scripture, when it comes to our Christ-like development, it is always on the incline growing increasingly, continuously. And again, we cannot overemphasize this truth that it is not just any kind of growing, but maturing, growing up in the love of God that is found in his son, Jesus Christ. Listen, we really have to nail this one down real good. I mean, real good. God loves us and he doesn't give up on any of us. It doesn't matter what you did last year, last month, last night. Doesn't matter if, if it was a minute ago or a moment ago. It, it's a done deal. Sell it in your soul. The blood of Jesus Christ covers the most rotten, the most disgusting, sat out in the sun, sewage, marinated life that you could ever imagine. He took it all and nailed it all to the cross and said it is finished. Know this truth. Know it. And the only way to know this truth is by the empowered spirit of truth that God has placed within his children to give us strength to endure. We are going to need it in these last days that we are in. We need supernatural strength, strength that we do not have apart from him. Then, as Paul says in Ephesians 3, 17 through 19, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all fullness of life and power that comes from God. And that's it. It's a wrap because that is our increase on every possible level to the utmost degree. Yes, that's us. A Psalm 121 song of degrees. And if you haven't noticed, if you haven't noticed by now, this Psalm sung life of ours is a slow. I mean, tedious, snail pace like gradual marching onward progression. Keep in the forefront of your mind that term gradual. You will see why later. Yes, you better believe nothing comes fast and easy on this walk. It is a gradual unfolding and beholding the revealed truth of God in Christ Jesus in us lived out in the world, but not of the world. And again, it is a measured out growth like in degrees that is always not short, but long as in long suffering. I know we don't like to hear that word suffering, but truth be told, the Christian life is long laboring. What I mean by that is that we don't change overnight. No, I'm sorry, but there's no no quick like microwave sort of air fry Insta pot stuff going on over here. No, listen, the vine dresser, John 15, 1, um, God has a vineyard. That's us that he continuously prunes. He cuts, snips, cultivates us or or we can call him the potter. Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay. You are our potter. We are the work of your hand. That's us. We are his lump of clay. And God being the potter is yet still pressing. He's still shaping ever so gradually molding us in Christ like this. That's sanctification, which is an ongoing process or. We could call him, being God, the, the one who sits like a refiner of silver burning away the dross, Malachi 3. For he will be like a blazing fire that refines metal or like a strong soap that bleaches clothes. Or we can call him just God, our creator, and he does whatever he pleases because he's sovereign. 
Of course, with all of this being said, we're talking about sanctification. We're talking about holiness uh, for without it, man will not see God. For the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy. Be separate, be cut, be set apart for my divine use. I like to think of it that we are in this sort of sanctifying slow crop pot furnace fixed on a setting that I like to call long suffering low. For how long? Until he calls us home. Until we really increase on high out of these hell bent on sin craving bodies of ours until we exit them permanently. Until then, that furnace crock pot we will remain in. And it will remain on a low setting gradually for our holiness producing good, increasing in increments, degrees and in temperature degrees. Yes, we're talking about long bearing, not quick like tempers, but long tempered waiting and waiting patiently for all things and. In all things, you know, those exact, truly, truly through comfort or discomforting things in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his, his purpose for from him, all things originate and through him, all things live and exist and to him are all things directed to him be the glory forever. Amen. So with patience, much patience, we wait long, suffering, long, temperedly. I learned here recently that that is what patience, long suffering means in Galatians 5 verse 22. You know where we have those fruits of the spirit listed, you know, love, joy, peace, long suffering. That's patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control in which there is no law, meaning you can practice those as much as you like. The original New Testament word used there for patience, long suffering is makrothumia. It is a compound translated term for patience in which makros means long, thumos means anger, like a person's temper. Strong's Concordance states it like this, and I quote, Patience, long-suffering, Bacothomia, embraces steadfastness and staying power. I like that term, staying power. If I had to add something to it, I would put, put in between staying and power and call it staying put power. That's the sort of patience we need to have. Staying put power in our families. Staying put power on our jobs, you know, wherever we go, have that sort of patience to stay put or stay composed under pressure. Lord, don't let us move. Don't let us burst. Don't let us give way. Hold us together. Stay put. The definition goes on to say, if in English we had an adjective long-tempered as a counterpart to short-tempered, the microthermia could be called the quality of being long-tempered. Takes you a long time to get angry. Oh, how we all need that sort of patience. Yes, long-tempered patience in Galatians 5 verse 22 is that patience that is often developed in us, unfortunately, most of us, in a way that it is gradual. There's that term again. And by the way, the patience there in that particular text is generally referring to the patience that we should have with what you think. Yep. People. Whereas in other texts of scripture, like in James chapter one, verse three, the word patience there is translated from the Greek compound word hupopone. Hupo means under. Mone means to stand or to abide, like standing or abiding under the weight of difficult trials, struggles, or conditions of all variety and sort. I'm quite sure that's why the author employed that exact same word for patience, hupopone, again in James chapter 5, verse 11, when he mentioned Job's endurance. Yes, that man's tried by fire patience that took him through trials of men. Many kinds, many kinds, just like ours today. We will suffer many kinds in which in the midst of are, you know, the King James put it, diverse temptations. The scripture says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Hupopane, 
which has a direct impact on our characters that are being what? Christ-like shaped. Christ-like shaped by the Spirit of God. That's why James says, my brethren, count it all joy. Because by the Holy Spirit through, not over, under, or around, but rather through. It is, yea, though I walk through. It is through many trials. Spiritual things are going on on the inside of us. That we might do what? Increase. The Bible says mature and complete, lacking nothing. That's scripture. And yes, sometimes it feels like our world is falling apart as we go through some of our life experiences in these clay jars of ours. Spurgeon says this, and I quote, Yet, trials can prove a wonderful work of God in us. I have looked back to times of trials with a kind of longing. Not to have them return, but to feel the strength of God as I felt it then. To feel the power of faith as I have felt it then. To hang on upon God's powerful arm as I hung upon it then. And to see God at work as I saw it then. Spurgeon, end quote. Again, it is through suffering. Paul says in Romans chapter 8. Verse 16 and 17, the spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Second Corinthians chapter four, verse 15 through 18. For all these things are for your sake. So that the grace that is including more and more people may cause thanksgiving to increase to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not despair. But even if our physical body is wearing away, our inner man, our inner person is being renewed day by day for our momentary light suffering is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison because we are not looking at what can be seen but at what cannot be seen for what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal because the Holy Spirit is always at work in us strategically in our innermost parts, there is always some type of spiritual construction going on. Stuff is moving, changing, or developing by fine or often imperceptible degrees. Hey, that's the definition of gradual, remember? I wonder if that's why this Psalm 121 is not only known as a song of degrees, but also read somewhere that is sometimes called, referred to as a gradual psalm which could be understood that the children of God must learn how to wait, patiently endure. Makotomia, patiently endure. Hupopone. Because he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, we will not be disappointed. Luke 18, 29, assuredly, I say to you, there is no one that has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. Amen. Let's continue because there's so much more to get to. And no, we will not touch on everything today. And, and, and I know, yes, we are still hanging out on the outside classifying perimeter of this Psalm 121 purposely. I have yet to expound on those eight scriptures, I know. But look at all that we can learn just from, if I may say, from the sideline of this psalm. So bear with me. There's more because I also found out that this Psalm 121 is sometimes called, get this, a soldier's hymn? Oh, I don't know about you, but that surely falls into our Christian description. Makes sense to me? Because are we not soldiers in the army of the Lord? 2 Timothy 2, verse 3 and 4. Philippians 2, verse 25. Philemon 1, verse 2. And feel free to go to Ephesians chapter 6 where you will find your military uniform or your soldier's armor. 
Again, forgive me for my redundancy. Psalm 121 is a song of degrees, a gradual psalm, a soldier's hymn, or, or, as you may see at the top of the chapter in your translation of the Bible, it may read a song of ascents. Pretty much the same, ascent as in ascend, increase, like in degrees, stages, elevation. Webster defines this term, the act as in the physical human act of rising or mounting upward climb. Oh, how fitting is that? When we think of our, our mountains of life trials, our uphill Christian battles we fight in this perverse, sin-sick world that hates God. I say that the world hates God because God says that the world hates him as well as it hates me and you. And the reality of that truth is becoming more and more evident as the days move closer and closer upon Christ's return. The definition of ascend goes on to say an upward slope or rising grade acclivity. Acclivity, which is an ascending slope as of a hill. I will lift my eyes to the hill from which comes my help. Psalm 121. One. It is said that the Jews sung this selection of psalms as they ascended up the steps leading up into the temple of God, which was on that holy hill called Mount Zion. Yes, they went up those steps to give God his just due glory, honor and praise. They had to take some steps, literally, just like we have to take some literal steps to come into the household of faith to engage in corporate prayer, praise and worship, fellowship with other believers in the church where the body of Christ actually looks like a body, the body that is made up of individual appendages like fingers, phalanges being joined together like two clasped hands in Christ. And as we are loved on by God and in return, loving on God and each other, edifying, encouraging, strengthening, iron sharpening, iron relationships are, you know, formed. Literal steps are made that the body of believers in here in the church starts to look like a body of believers out there in the world to the glory of God. That others may see and be compelled to come into the kingdom of God for the master of the house says unto his servants go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. So again, we come in here to be built up, to be motivated, to keep on building up out there. Out there that the world may see how we live, how we conduct ourselves together in and through adversities held together by the spirit of God, encapsulated in his love for his glory. We march on through the storms, even dance and rejoice in them in weakness where his strength is made perfect by his grace and mercy because whether by life or by death we are sending a strong message out there that there is a God and his name is Jesus and he is ready to offer eternal life he is ready to forgive only repent and believe for the kingdom of God is at hand and as far as this Christian life no it, it's not easy because we are constantly being asked by God to take some out of our comfort zone, literal steps to live out the true beyond our expectations Christian life. Listen to this. In Hebrew, the literal translation of this type of Psalm, Psalm 121, is this. Listen, it is song of the steps. So there we have another one. Yes, that's us all day long. We take literal steps of obedience to the word of God. We take elevating steps of expectancy to move to a higher ground, a better place of holy intimacy with God the Father, through God the Son, by God the Holy Spirit. To sum it all up, before we even get a chance to elaborate on the text, we have indirectly learned that the Christian life is all about moving from one position to another position of improvement, progress, moving forward with motivation, confidence, 
hope and encouragement in a lifestyle that is governed by the sovereign providential care of God. Yes, Psalm 121 is known as a song of degrees, a gradual psalm, a soldier's hymn, a song of ascents, or a song of the steps. Uh, it makes sense to me when I read in Philippians 3 verse 14 where Paul says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Part one, complete.